I'm Wasteland Firebird. Today we're going to the Feast and Furious Car Show. We're actually at the Feast and Furious Car Show, but it hasn't begun yet because we are the first ones here for the Feast and the Furious Car Show. The human body has natural limitations. We create tools to overcome those limitations, effectively giving ourselves superpowers. A car is a tool that gives us the superpower of high-speed movement. A car is a tool that multiplies our effort. Tools are one of the three components of prosperity. Prosperity has been described as natural resources plus human effort times tools. That's because natural resources, you can't do much with that. That's just what they are. They're limited. But human effort can be multiplied and improved by the tools that we use. And that's how you create prosperity. It's kind of rainy out today, so there's a chance there won't be anybody there. And then you just rip it, and that's like your entry, your, your vote for people's choice? Yeah. Okay. Bailiff in that thing. Uh-huh. Full length extractors, two and a half feet, exhaust, top of Yeah. There is confusion about lemonade in Australia. There is a myth that Australians do not know what lemonade is. And in fact, they do. And here's proof. In the United States, Lemonade is lemon juice, sugar, and water. And in Australia, it can be that too. It can be that too. But they also have sodas that are flavored like lemonade, but it's a soda. And they're very good. But sometimes if you ask for a lemonade, you might get handed a soda that is flavored like lemonade. And other times you might get handed an actual lemonade. I think this is actually kind of like the Ute discussion. I think some Australians will say that lemonade is a lemonade flavored soda, and others will say the lemonade is lemon sugar and water, and then others will say it can be either one. But they do know what lemonade is. We'd like to get a traditional, a barbecue, and two Cokes, no sugar. my car and brought it into the car show today. My 2017 Toyota 86 in moon slate gray. Mazda RX-3. I'm learning about these. I don't even know if we got these in the U.S., but they seem to be all over Australia. Oh, we have something special that's arrived at the car show. Somebody was not afraid to come out and drive their Ferrari in the rain. I grew up watching Magnum P.I. I love this Ferrari. It's, it's one of the 80s Ferraris that are kind of forgotten, but people my age, we adore this one. Look, he drives his car in the rain. What the hell is wrong with you people? Why didn't you come out to the car show tonight? Rain doesn't stop him. Look at this, it's immaculate. It's perfectly clean too. He, did, he managed to like not drive through any puddles on the way here. Even his wheels are clean. Look, how did he do that? Okay, Magna PI had a 308, I think. This is a 328, but close enough for me. Gated shifter. The world needs more gated shifters. For me, that's what a supercar is. This isn't a purple car. I was, I was told to look for the purple car and I, all I found was this but it's like purple and green color changing Ford Falcon XR6. See, we didn't get any of the later Falcons. I mean, they stopped selling the Falcon in the US in like the 70s. So I am really jealous of these cars because all we had that was cool from Ford was the Mustang. And then briefly, you know, we had some cool Focuses and Fiestas. The Mercury Marauder maybe. You guys had the Falcon and you kept having the Falcon in the 80s and the 90s and they're all amazing. In the US, the muscle car era ended in 1974. They put catalytic converters on all the cars in 1975, and then there weren't any more muscle cars. In Australia, I don't know when they put catalytic converters on the cars, but all I know is that they kept making muscle cars through the 70s and 80s and 90s. In the United States, we didn't get muscle cars back until they brought back the retro Mustang Camaro Challengers in the 2000s. 
in Australia, the muscle car era never ended. Yeah, it's good, good spot here. It's undercover. And, like, yeah, yeah. And oh, I know. I've never been to this show yeah, before. Yeah, neither have I. And uh, everybody's like afraid to come out because of the rain or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, it's but... it's starting to fill out. And that guy wasn't afraid to bring his Ferrari in the rain. You know, if it seems like there's no fun, you got to bring the fun. You know, yeah, yeah, if there's it. no energy, you got to bring the yeah, energy, yeah, yeah. right? I love the color. Yeah, has a yellow. What colors could you get a Malu in? Like uh, yellow, the orange, black, the green, orange, green. Okay. Oh, hot house. Oh, there's so many different colors, but to me, the ones that stand out is the green and the yellow. I think I think the yellow is actually the best color. That's what I reckon. Yeah. And it, they wanted ninety nine thousand. I don't know what it actually sold for. A couple of cars you wanted to trade in or something. I was like, I'm missing. Well, if you miss if you want to trade a couple Toyota 86s for this, I might be up for that. <laughs> this is the color. I want this color, and I want it in a stick shift. Okay, there's one problem I have, Holden, GM. I, I know Holden that you're not really in existence anymore, but I'd like to go back in time and uh, discuss your abbreviations. HSV, Holden Special Vehicles, right? Have you never heard of a thing called herpes simplex virus, HSV? When you were first naming Holden Special Vehicles, was that really the best you could do? It's okay though, Subaru has STIs, sexually transmitted infections. And in the United States, if you want to go to school and learn about auto repair, you can go to UTI, the Universal Technical Institute, but it also means urinary tract infection. So don't worry, Holden, you're not alone on this. I desperately want your herpes simplex virus, Malou. A gorgeous little Ford muscle car. I love little muscle cars. I love small muscle cars, and I know a lot of people will probably tell me that's a contradiction. No such thing as a small muscle car. Muscle cars are big, but I don't know what you call them. Pony cars, something like that. It seems like Australia and Europe especially, you got more pony cars, more tiny muscle cars. I got a little something to show the viewers at home. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's for sleeping, guys. It gives you a lot of room to sleep. Hold an SS V8 something or other. People told me to feature more of these 80s Holdens. I don't know anything about them. I don't even know about the concept of an 80s muscle car because in the United States, we did not have muscle cars in the 80s. I mean, maybe the, uh, the Buick Grand National or something like that. Like you could probably name one or two. I mean, there was the Mustang, but the, F, the Fox Body Mustang, but like, there was really not a wide muscle car scene that was continuing into the 80s at all. I love the seats on this thing. Look at those seats. Well, this guy wasn't afraid to come out in the rain with his Ford Falcon GT in purple, which of course is the best color. Well, except for maybe pink. Cars are made to drive in the rain. They're made to drive in the snow. They're made to drive in the mud. They're made to drive in the fog. Get in your car and drive it, people. Holden Calais Turbo. We had an Oldsmobile Calais in the United States, but I don't really think it looked this good. Yeah, it didn't look anything like this. This is just reusing a name, I think. The thing is, in the United States, if you had a car from this era, you didn't care about it. Like, even if it was kind of good, very few people cared about their cars to actually do something like this to them and keep it going and keep it looking great. It's a Commodore HSV Club Sport. It looks like from the 90s. We didn't have any good muscle cars in the 90s either. I mean, there was a Firebird, there was a Camaro, there was a Mustang in the 90s, don't get me wrong. But they were not appealing. Australia's muscle cars from the 90s were just much better looking. They looked like they, they were adhering to the true idea of a muscle car, which was that you just take a normal passenger car and you put a big motor in it. It's a Subaru. Sexually transmitted infection. 
Okay, the Suzuki Swift in hot, bright, neon yellow. What a great car! Why did we not get this in the United States? It's a great, cheap, simple, gorgeous, cool, sporty car. It's a 1M. Okay, last time I pointed one of these out, I said that you could get them in a manual. And then I looked it up, and they only came in a manual. How cool is that? When someone says MG, this is what I think of. We did get these in the US, but that was it. We did not get anything else by MG. We got these little convertibles. There's a bouncy castle here. I don't know if I'm allowed to go in. Let's check out the terms and conditions. A responsible donor guardian over the age of 18 must supervise the children on the jumping castle equipment at all times. They must have a clear view of the interior of the jumping castle and maintain a close physical presence. I'm trying to figure out if I'm allowed in the jumping castle. Are you the guy that runs the jumping castle? That's correct. Okay, is, are adults allowed in there? Fortunately not. We can jump outside the jumping castle. Were you telling me early this car was purple? Yeah. It's purple and green. It's like a whole bunch of colors. So it actually came this way. It's a factory color? Yeah, it's a factory color. adorable little thing. I have no idea what this is. Okay, it's a Mazda. I didn't even know it was a Mazda. Oh, look at that interior. Look what they've done with it. It's got a turbo gracefully poking its head out. I think that's gorgeous. The motor was a little too big and so we created a small opening to reveal the part that needed to be revealed. Rockin' that funky brick house beat, party people in the house, get on your feet, get on your feet, get down to the sound of brick house falling down. This beat pops like a popcorn popper, this beat hops like a grasshopper, Ruby Linda on the hip hopper, MC's drive, they can't stop. I have been told that I must attend something that is called a ute muster. I had no idea what that meant, those words didn't really make any sense to me. And so I just forgot about it, but eventually I got around to looking it up, and I discovered what a ute muster is. And you are right, I absolutely must attend a Ute Muster. I'm very much looking forward to this. Unfortunately, I can't make it to the Denny Muster. I think it is, I think that's the one I want to go to. I can't make it to that one this year, but I can make it next year, most likely. XR6, I think that might be the Barra motor that people are telling me about. Ford had an inline six motor in the 2000s that everyone is very, a big fan of. got this in four doors. This was back when the Hilux and the Tacoma were the same truck because I recognized this truck. So I think we did get this. And then at some point, I don't know, in the past 20, 30 years, they diverged and the Hilux and Tacoma became different things. So I found you because so I was looking for fibers in Australia. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Trophies for dancing. Oh, trophies for dancing, yeah, that's a, exactly. If you bring a trophy for dancing, though, I mean, you only need to bring one. That was the Feast and Furious car show. My favorite comments from you guys are, number three, when you tell me facts about cars. Number two, when you tell me car shows and museums that I need to visit, because I don't know, I don't know where to go next. And number one is when you tell me stories about the cars that you've owned. And if you see me at a car show, just go crazy and freak out and act like an idiot and run up and say, Oh my God, you're wasting fiber. And I'll put you in the video. <laughs> this place has a mirror in it. A lime green mirror and a Countach. Humans have been on Earth for 100,000 years. 
was only just a little more than 100 years ago that we got cars. And that means for 99,900 years, humanity existed on Earth without any cars. It wasn't just cars that we had to do without. We had to do without antibiotics, vaccines, surgery that actually worked, air conditioning, airplanes. Most of us had to do without indoor plumbing refrigeration, radios, computers, cell phones. Some people have asked me to tell you more about where I came from. The problem is that I'm not sure you'll believe me. I have a different memory of history than you have. I grew up in the same 70s that some of you grew up in. But in 1981, a terrible cataclysmic event happened and for 40 years we struggled to put the world back together and then all of a sudden one day I somehow traded places with another version of myself and now I'm in your universe so I'm here to remind you that prosperity is a fragile thing don't take it for granted I'm Wasteland Firebird Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. Thanks to Matt Skelly for the camera work. <laughs>